Hi there Booktube, this is Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and today is a book review. This book review is based on Sarah Waters' The Night Watch. This is a literary fiction book based during World War II. Um, so big heads up, if you're not a lover of World War II fiction, this may not be a book for you. Uh, I do have my notepad, I have notes. Um, this is a book that is written in quite a unique way. The actual writing itself is fantastic, is actually fantastic. Uh, what I'm going to do is first off start off with the blurb. I know that this is not a brand new book, so I know that maybe quite a few of you may have read it, but for those of you that haven't or it's gone off a radar and it was something that did appeal to you and you've forgotten it because of all the brand new books that have come out and we all do it, we've all been known to do it, just wanted to give you a reminder. So this is the blurb. The Night Watch is the extraordinary story of four Londoners. Kay, who wanders the streets in mannish clothes, restless and searching. Helen, who harbours a troubling secret. Viv, glamour girl, recklessly loyal to her soldier lover. And Duncan, an apparent innocent, struggling with demons of his own. Now, I'm not going to go any further than that, but that is the premise of the book. So how this book is written is quite different in that the um, story starts at the end and works to the beginning. So what I found quite um, interesting about it was the writing style. Uh, Sarah Walter's writing style was um, very enjoyable, really um, liked reading it, found it um, very pleasant to read. Um, bit dry at times but I think that was more based around the, the the not about the writing style itself but around the story itself um the characters uh were obviously going back in time in this book so you start off at the end and you meet all the characters you meet all the four characters and their periphery characters and it follows them through their life initially in the first part in in the current time so I think that was um, just before the end of the war in 1944 when the Little Blitz was happening in London and it travels back to 19... 1942 and then I think 1941 apologies if that's not right but it's broken down into three parts basically and it follows our four characters throughout those those three parts so when you first read the first part, you are left with a lot of um, questions in regard to the pacing. The pacing does seem extremely slow and I struggled a number of times to actually go back and pick the book up. Um, for me, the final part, the, the section 1941, so the third part of the book, which is technically the opening really of the story that happens at the end, um, and kind of pulls all the stories together was actually the fastest paced section of all and I actually felt was a little bit short I felt that the first two parts were 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 long and meandering and yes nice at, at times very um, nice to read and interesting um, but I did feel that both those sections could have had additional interest added to them which I'll get to um, in a moment um, but the pace of 1941 seemed to sit at the right pace for me and um, obviously um, time to, oh, sorry, a lot of ums going on today uh, and tied up a lot of obviously loose ends from the very beginning you were kind of wondering well how did that come to pass and, and there were also a lot of things that you didn't ask how did that come to pass but kind of explained themselves in, in another way um, and also still left me with questions, funnily enough. But but sometimes I think it's nice for a book to leave you with questions. Most of the main characters actually left me feeling a bit meh. They seemed a bit lacking. They seemed to be a bit lacking in personality, um, a little bit in, in, in moral values, drives, focus. I know, I know nobody is 100%. But they lacked some kind of humility, some kind of humanity. They, they, they didn't seem human. They almost sometimes at times felt very one-dimensional. Um, that might have been intentional by the author. But for me, 
that made me struggle to have any kind of commitment, faith or even inclination to care what happened to them. You know, apart from obviously the resolution of the book. Um, and it was a shame because obviously the book is based around these four predominant characters. And in a book that is a substantial number of pages, again, typical Emma, um, at least 500 pages. I think it was 500, 502 pages. 502 pages. 300, maybe 375 of them had these one-dimensional characters that at times made me mad as hell. Um, made me want to give up. Made me not like them. Now maybe... You're all screaming at me, Emma, that's the point. That was the point of it. You were supposed to have these kind of negative responses and negative reactions to these characters. And I may well have meant to have had them. And I did have them to some extent. But it also meant at some times that it was almost pushing me to the point of DNFing the book. I don't DNF a lot of books. I do DNF books more now than I ever did at any other time in my life. When I was younger, I absolutely outright refused to DNF a book. And that would make me, at times, lose countless days and weeks of reading on a book that I never liked and would never pick up again. Um, and as I'm getting older, and especially now that I've got BookTube, and I've seen that a lot of my BookTube colleagues are also at that at that point where they've decided that you know there are so many wonderful and amazing authors and stories and, and books out there that we want to read do we really want to sacrifice valuable reading time on something that we just genuinely aren't enjoying so i got to the 50 page point and it started to pick up and i thought you know what i'll stick with it got to the 100 page point it started to die off again thought I'd stick with it. We've got to 100 pages now. You know, we've had this situation happen before. It's it's going to get better. Um, so I stuck with it. And I did stick with it to the bitter end. Maybe to my detriment, maybe not. Um, at the end, when I reached part three, 1941, I didn't feel it was to my detriment. Um, but there are some points that I do want to raise. Apologies for the whining dog in the background. We've got a neighbour moving house and he just wants to tell the new neighbours we live here and what we're up to. Um, and also the light's starting to fade. I have put a lamp on, but it, it's made me a bit shadowy and spooky. Um, <laughs> maybe I should sit like that because that's, that's where the light is. Anyway, so I'm trying not to make this video too long, so let me wrap up from where I am. So there were some areas that did interest me in this book and I wish could have been maybe explored a bit more than they were. Uh, the first was uh, Kay. She had a friend called um, Mickey and they worked in the um, emergency services during World War II. So obviously because a lot of the men were off at war, uh, a lot of the women uh, had to take roles in factories, land army, emergency services. So they were first responders for an ambulance and an ambulance station. I would have loved to have learnt more about that. I would have loved to have learnt more about um, their the exposure and their life experiences that they had whilst in the service of the ambulance Um during World War Two, and and their, you know, what they had to deal with, you know, empty block blocked roads, empty roads, bombs still falling, um, being redirected, what they found at scenes, th how they had to deal with the emotional and psychological approaches of finding dead bodies, um, trying to explain to family and loved ones that. Um, came out of bomb shelters in their back garden that the although the back of their house was still standing the front of their house no longer existed um lots of different things like that and I felt that could have been better explored and and I also think that parts one and two had the capacity for that to to be expanded you know we were introduced to Kay we knew she worked at the at the ambulance station we knew she drove an ambulance we knew she she had a colleague called Mickey um 
that friendship was also not explored and I felt actually I was quite um quite drawn to Mickey I found her quite interesting and I found her quite um quite fun and I think she could have just added a little uplift element to the story that maybe it didn't have but again these are all my own personal opinions they're nobody else's opinions this is just based on what I've read um one of the other con uh well one of the other characters is Duncan um he is uh as we find on during the book um in a prison he is a what we initially think may well be a conscientious objector um but then it turns out that it is implied that it could be for another reason um i also found this really interesting the exposure and the details of the i don't know 10 20 pages that they had based on duncan and his um cellmate Fraser were quite interesting I would have liked to have known um exactly why Fraser was in there that wasn't quite given away we, we get the impression that he might well have been a conscientious objector I think that's quite an interesting story um obviously during the time of World War One conscientious objectors were frowned upon it was a court-martialing offence uh, a lot of men were killed uh, by firing squad for objecting to fight um, and take part in World War One, and that was a lot more terrifying um, war. Obviously, it was a lot more arm to arm, um, arm to arm, hand to hand combat. Um, there were, you know, there were animals involved in World War One. You know, it was a lot more up close and personal. Um, in World War Two, it seems to some extent the government learned a lesson in that they obviously didn't kill everybody who decided to object to fighting when they were called up to join the army. Um, however, uh, they were imprisoned. And I would have liked to have known um, from the history, have that injected a little bit in there to give a little bit more information. I, I mean, Duncan is classed as one of the four characters, but I think out of the four characters, he's one of the few people actually given a great deal of detail. Um, we do see, again, 1941, quite an interesting side to Duncan. We, we see a friendship. We see um, an unusual and perplexing friendship we also see a glimpse of how his relationship is with his father which again seems underdeveloped and quite interesting or could have been quite interesting um so that's two areas obviously the third area being Duncan's relationship with his friend that we meet in chapter sorry in part three um in 1941 um, again, the implications of earlier on ensue that this friendship is something slightly different than it is. I don't think it is. I don't know if it was necessary to make it think that it, it was um, something that it wasn't, um, just for the sake of it. Um, and again, sorry for the ums, it's my thinking brain. But uh, it was you know it was an interesting area and i think could have been a little bit more enhanced i think actually out of all the four characters uh duncan almost could have been written off because until you get to 1941 yes there is a connection between duncan and viv in that viv is duncan's sister um but it's not really explored in quite the same way um also there's a a gentleman that uh, Duncan is living with at the beginning of the book and there is definitely a relationship there and there is definitely implications um, made again to the nature of their relationship <clears throat> and towards 1941 again as we're traveling um, back to the beginning of their story uh, we find out his connection with him but we never truly connect the dots between part part one and part three and again i think that is unusual um and a little bit bizarre i know there's some kind of religious belief there but again 
you know some of the drop some of the dots aren't joined um which frustrated me a little bit but there you go that's just me um i did get very angered about one scenario and that was in regard to viv um she as we meet her in in the very beginning of the book um she's very walked over downtrodden and we do learn we do learn why she is a bit walked over and downtrodden and we do work out from her relationships sorry growling it's the na new neighbors moving in again but we we do kind of work out how the relationship that she is in has started and all the implications of that however again looming back on 1941 but when we get to 1941 and the explanation is lifted and i kind of did I kind of worked out what the explanation was going to be. Quiet. I kind of understood what the explanation was going to be. What frustrated me about it was actually what it, what this book had done is taken a very strong woman, a very independent woman who was working, was in an important, um, well, not not majorly important, but was in an important job. She was working for the war effort. She was working um you know as as an independent woman okay she still lived with her father for financial reasons and also for family obligation reasons um but she was a very strong woman and by the time i got to 90 although i didn't particularly like her again none of the four characters i particularly was gunning for a happy resolution by the time i got to the end and i found out where she started from i was fuming that she had been belittled and reduced to a glorified mistress, um, a walkover, a manipulated, controlled, weak, lacklustre female character, and that really, that really didn't didn't sit well with me um i can appreciate that sometimes you do get um weakened women i do feel that this book at times really actually i don't think apart from mickey who was a peripheral character i don't and maybe a little bit julia um from a selfish standpoint um early on but I do think that most of the women in this book didn't really have a lot of gumption. They didn't really... Ha um, I'm not Jewish, but they didn't really have a lot of chutzpah, you know? They, they needed something... They needed a kick up the arse, is basically, I think, what I'm trying to say. But I can't find a polite way of saying it. And also, um, last but not least, there was a conclusion in a love triangle that, again, I had kind of thought I'd figured out and then got to the end and finished 1941 and they explained what had happened and I was like what really is that it that's that's the conclusion that's how this love triangle is going to end up it's going to end up with a massive question mark that we're never going to know what happened or why it happened the way it happened so yeah not ideal i gave this book three stars there were there were prime elements of it that looked interesting um i will read sarah waters again i know i've got the little stranger on my wish list which i'm hoping to get to at some point so i will give um her another go and i know that some people have said that the little stranger is better than this one as i say i don't completely rule it out and i did finish it and I did enjoy chunks of it. Primarily, nineteen forty-one um, was was a fantastic piece of paced reading for me. Um, but yeah, also left a bit hanging and left with questions and wanting more, um, and not necessarily in a good way. So I hope this review helps. Apologies for the fading lighting. Um, I've got in from work, and unfortunately, we haven't hit 
British summertime over in the UK yet and so it's starting to get dull and dreary. I hope you're all well. I look forward to speaking to you soon. If you've got any thoughts or comments on what I've said or if you've read the book and got a different viewpoint or can offer me some enlightenment on maybe I've missed something, then please do comment in, in the comments down below. Uh, this is obviously only my opinion. I'm not belittling anybody else's opinions or experiences. Please be nice to me um, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care, booktube. Bye for now.